Hello, and welcome back to another episode of the Alter Your Health podcast. This is your source of information and inspiration to promote the holistic transformation of your health and the health of our planet. My name is Dr. Benjamin Alter. I'm the host. My name is Dr. Suzanne Alter. I'm the co-host. And we're both naturopathic doctors who support individuals in reversing disease and reclaiming optimal health through whole food, plant-based nutrition and mind-body medicine. So on today's episode, we are going to be talking about food sensitivities and really understanding the root cause, what's behind your food sensitivities, and also providing you some guidance and direction in actually, truly reversing those sensitivities. We're also going to be talking about the distinction between sensitivities and food allergies, um, which is a little bit you know, misunderstood by in the popular sense. Um, so yeah, hopefully we'll be providing you some clarity and direction in this episode. Uh, but before we dive in, just a quick announcement about the whole food plant-based challenge that is happening on Monday, starting Monday, May 25th. That's next Monday, right around the corner. We're really excited for it. It's happening in our plant-based and stress-free Facebook group. And in this challenge, this is going to be the stress-free series um, in the whole food plant-based or in the plant-based and stress-free Facebook group. <laughs> we're talking a lot all the time about nutrition. You know, it is a plant-based group, but it's also a stress-free group. And in this uh, challenge upcoming, we're really excited to share some revolutionary information as it pertains to understanding stress and relating with stress in a new and unique way that supports you in actually feeling well and also healing because we know that the mind and body are one. Yes. Yes. So if you're interested in joining us, you can head over to www.alter.health slash WFPB Dash. Dash challenge, thank you. <laughs> or you can go to, uh, you can look up plant-based stress-free group in Facebook or go to our Instagram bio and click the link there to sign up. We hope to see you there. So now on into the uh, conversation about food sensitivities and reversing those. So, yeah. When, I, oh, something else? No, I just, okay. I just want to introduce this topic because okay. it's one that is very near and dear to my heart because I definitely suffered from food sensitivities for um, a few years while I was dealing with also chronic GI symptoms and also chronic joint pain and other issues. And um, now, of course, those are no longer an issue for me. I'm so happy to say that they are a thing of the past and that eating a whole food plant-based diet is what helped get me to the point uh, in my health where I'm now able to enjoy all of these delicious plant foods in abundance. Um, but I still, I get a lot of people who say, you know, I'm really interested in eating a whole food plant-based diet, but I just don't do well with fiber. I just can't eat grains. I just can't do beans. Um, I know I'm sensitive to all these foods and I really feel for you. I really feel for all the people who feel like they are stuck in this place, this frustrating place where they know that something they're eating is, is bugging them. They don't really know what it is. And what can happen a lot is that there can be a lot of fear that comes up around food because you don't want to eat the, you know, the wrong food that triggers your symptoms. So really, you know, this, this episode is, is for those of you who relate to this. And um, again, my heart goes out to you. But at the same time, I hope that this episode brings you a lot of hope for healing because reversing these food sensitivities is completely 100% possible through eating a whole food plant-based diet. You don't need to be stuck on your low FODMAPs, paleo carnivore diet for the rest of your life. Yeah. And also this conversation certainly is for people who don't maybe have a frank food sensitivity, quote unquote, that's been diagnosed or identified. Uh, but maybe you just have a sensitive gut and have issues, uh, you know, digesting your food and just chronic health issues in general, because we know that health starts in your gut. Um, so this issue is really one focus on gut health and healing. And just a couple weeks ago, the, the episode that we released was with Dr. B, 
the uh, the Gut Health MD. That's his Instagram handle, and we had a great conversation about gut health, the microbiome. So this is maybe an extension of that conversation. A lot of the information that he has actually written about in his wonderful new book, Fiber Fueled, it is certainly in line with the science that we see as well, and also the the clinical experience that we have as well. So we're clarifying that. Um, what he what he has written about and what we have seen and practice and preach. Yes. So uh, maybe first we should tweeze apart food sensitivities versus food allergies. Do you want to do that real quick? Let's do that real quick. Okay. Yes, it's very simple. And so um, a lot of people do confuse these terms, but they're very different. And so a food allergy is when your immune response has a frank allergic response to a certain food. And what happens in the immune system is that it will produce IgE antibodies. And these antibodies, they create a reaction in the body that produces symptoms that, um, you know, can include the following, um, tightness in the throat, trouble breathing, hives, swelling, itching think of that you know that standard kind of allergic response that some people can yeah, have yeah that's related with uh, to the release of histamine throughout the body and things like that so that's when you know it can be important to have benadryl on hand or an epi pen or things like that think extreme when we're talking about food allergies think um, you know, small amounts causing a big reaction in the body, mm -hmm. which uh, is a, an immunological phenomenon with that IgE antibody response. Yeah. And this tends to happen with, uh, with uh, it can, with, I guess I should say the most common foods that uh, create this. That. Yeah. But I mean, you know, <laughs> just so people have a better idea, think like, you know, peanut, when people say I have a peanut allergy or I have a shellfish allergy, I'll swell up if I eat shellfish. Um, uh, dairy can also have that response. Yeah. So anyway, okay. So on. Uh, on the other hand, food sensitivities are a different sort of immunological reaction. Um, one where the immune system mounts a response against uh, food proteins that are entering the bloodstream. Uh, but in, different antibodies are released, IgG antibodies, which are a delayed immune response. Um, so that means that you might eat grains or beans or nuts or whatever the food might be or kale or anything and the food protein can get into your bloodstream and then cause an immunological reaction that you might experience as inflammation in the body uh, the next day, the next week, up even up to or at least a few days. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, this, this is a delayed long-term kind of issue. Yeah. And, and the symptoms can vary, you know, very, very broadly from, you know, having um, digestive symptoms, gas, bloating, constipation, diarrhea, things like that. Um, but they can also be outside of the gastrointestinal system. You might get migraines, you might get joint pain, you might um, have fatigue. Um, so there's many different responses to uh, this, this, these uh, food sensitivities. Yeah, and so now speaking to exactly what's behind these food sensitivities, it really has to do with a term that's been called various things, including increased intestinal permeability, leaky gut, so we're now talking dysbiosis. About, we're now talking about the underlying cause of food sensitivities. Yes, the underlying cause of food sensitivities is uh, essentially a disrupted gut microbiome dysbiosis, which causes leakiness of the gut or in increased intestinal permeability. And really, you can think about it as, you know, a lot of people have used the, the, the this sort of thing if you're looking at the video of, of just your cells of your gut lining, which, you know, you've just got this really delicate skin of your gastrointestinal tract that's one cell thick that are uh, attached to one another by these tight junctions that become a little bit loosened and a little bit permeable and therefore food particles, specifically proteins, go through the walls of your digestive system and into the bloodstream undigested and therefore can mount an immune response. And uh, what creates this weakened and permeable intestinal membrane 
is a, a microbiome that is just not optimal. And uh, another word for a non-optimal microbiome is dysbiosis, where we just have too much of the quote-unquote wrong bacteria and too little of the quote-unquote right bacteria. And the right and wrong bacteria for any individual is unique. There is no optimal microbiome that everyone should have. Your microbiome is different than Dr. Susanna's microbiome. Dr. Susanna's microbiome is different than my microbiome. We're all unique and different in that, in that sort of way. But one thing that is in common with all of our healthy microbiomes is optimal biodiversity of those gut, of, of those gut probiotic bacteria. And the way to promote optimal healthy diversity of probiotic bacteria within our guts is to eat a diverse array of whole plant foods. But what about the beans and the grains and the kale and the tomatoes and, and whatever the things that are causing that irritation? If I, if I know that you know, biodiversity is, is essential for my microbiome and I know that biodiversity of plants coming into my mouth is essential for my health, but I can't tolerate these foods, what am I to do? Yeah. Well, you know, at this point, if someone is having these uh, symptoms of food sensitivities or, uh, you know, maybe they're having some digestive issues, um, what's very popular now is for a lot of doctors to recommend certain therapeutic diets that decrease fiber. For example, the low FODMAPs diet, the um, specific carbohydrate diet, the plant paradox diet, the plant paradox diet, where, you know, the um, the kind of reasoning behind these diets is that um, these certain fibers, uh, these certain nutrients in plants are actually inflammatory to the gut. So we need you to can just say them them, the, the lectins, the phytates, the oxalates, these right. kind of things. Yeah. And many people do actually feel uh, they will feel a little bit better when they start to leave out certain fibers from um, their diet. Because let's say that they don't have an optimally balanced microbiome. They don't have the the bacteria, for example, to uh, ferment and break down beans, then when they eat beans, they're going to have a lot of gas and bloating and uncomfortable symptoms. Um, so, you know, you know, this is really, this approach is good for symptom management, but it does not address the underlying cause because if we continue... It just creates more dysbiosis. It does. If we yeah. continue to leave out the fibers we're just weakening our intestinal uh, microbial populations even more and more and more. Because if you don't eat specific fibers, then the bacteria that we need to digest those fibers, they're going to go away. Our microbiome adapts on like a meal to meal basis. You 100%, know, yeah. if you eat apples at one meal, then you're going to have an upregulation of those microbes that digest the fibers and apples. Um, you know, and if you if you have a diet where you're not eating any rice at all, you're not going to have the bugs in your intestines that digest rice. And this goes this goes for all foods, all fibers. And so if the goal for healing gut issues and food sensitivities is to create more balance, more resilience in our, our microbiome, then really we should be increasing all of these different foods, not taking them away. Yes. So, so <laughs> if you have trouble eating grains or beans, and if you've gone months and months or years and years of restricting grains and beans or tomatoes or potatoes or you know, eggplant or the nightshades or, or whatever it is, the, the way to move in the direction of health and the way to heal these food sensitivities, the way to diversify your microbiome and reverse the uh, in increased intestinal permeability or leaky gut that's happening is to slowly, mindfully, peacefully move in the direction of incorporating these foods in a slow and mindful way. So not going out and having a whole roasted eggplant, not going out on, and binging on hummus and carrot sticks, not going out and just having like a huge bowl of oatmeal after you have not eaten any grains for you know months and months or years and years, 
but to have just small amounts in, uh, you know, mindful and isolated times along with other foods that you know that you can tolerate well. And, uh, and also, I really want to get into, you know, eating these foods in, I use the term already, a mindful way, which means that our physiology is in a state of peace and relaxation. Because if we're talking about increased intestinal permeability, and if we're talking about indigestion of foods and proteins, then we need our digestive enzymes, our digestive system to be functioning optimally. And what that means is that we need to be in a parasympathetic nervous system state, otherwise known as our rest, digest, and heal nervous system state. And for those of you who don't know, this is our default state of operation, even though so many of us are so used to operating in the stressful sympathetic state. But one way that you can turn on the parasympathetic nervous system state is put your feet on the ground before a meal or any time, but specifically relating to food. Put your feet on the ground, put your hands down, open them up, take a breath, exhale, lengthen your exhalation, maybe say thank you or feel grateful for something, for the food on your table or for your life itself. And that process in and of itself will start creating digestive juices that will support you in breaking down the grains and the beans and the whatever else has been an issue for you. You need your digestive juices to break down these foods. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and I love this comment that we have coming in through Instagram that it can be helpful to make smoothies, purees, soups to add these ingredients back in slowly, right? Oh, that's, that's a good point as well yeah. because the smoothies and the purees, um, yeah, they're, they're, you know, getting, they're getting the, the first phase of digestion done for you. Yeah, they're already chewing the food for you. Yeah. But yeah, because a lot of people think like, oh, okay, so I'll start to bring beans back into my diet. So then what? maybe they, they buy a can of beans and, and you've got all these beans here. Well, what are you going to do with it? I think a lot of people jump into it too quickly. They think, oh, well, I've opened this can of beans. Now I need to eat it all. But really, we would recommend like, you know, start with maybe just a spoonful, see how that goes, work up from there. Um, really doing this slowly and gradually. And peacefully. And, and just peacefully. And all the while, we encourage you to also have this background understanding of your body and trusting your body in healing itself. Because the amazing thing about the body is, yes, it heals itself. But when we're talking about that self-healing capacity that you have, it is so easy to appreciate it when we look at the digestive system itself. The very the the lining of your digestive system, the cells of your uh, intestines and colon and stomach are regenerating constantly. And in just like 24 hours, you're going to have a whole new lining of your stomach and uh, small intestine and large intestine. So if we, we all we got to do is just allow that regeneration to happen and get out of the way and, um, you know, be in a peaceful state that trusts that process. Yeah. Yeah. That's a really, really good point, because as someone who has had many food sensitivities in the past, um, it's easy to get into a mindset of thinking that certain foods are poisonous to you. So when it comes time to actually bring them back in, there could be a fear response. Um, and so we encourage you, actually, the way to look at it, the way to look at it is that if you aren't, um, if you're having symptoms in response to eating a certain food, you know, food sensitivity symptoms, that means that your your microbiome needs that food even more. Yeah, it's, exactly. it's, it's, you know, it's, that's the irony of it is that, oh, you're sensitive to tomatoes. It means you need more tomatoes in your diet. <laughs> well, the the the, uh, the only place that that's not true, of course, is animal products and like sensitivities to dairy and uh, these these foods that really human beings are not designed to thrive on. Right, right. But what's interesting about you know people ask, well, why don't I have a sensitivity to meat? Huh. It's because there's no fiber in meat. So you know your body doesn't rely on your microbiome to break down meat like it does with plant foods. Well, and a lot of people do have sensitivities to meat because meat, of course, is so high 
high in protein and fat, which it takes a lot more digestive energy, digestive enzymes, and time to break down. So that can actually lead to digestive disturbance, especially when we combine meat with other proteins and fibers and, and whatnot. Right. Um, and that's why maybe like something like a carnivore diet, something like an all meat diet might actually soothe your digestive issues because you're not mixing things up. You're just giving your, your system one thing to, to break down. But just because you don't have any digestive issues for a short period of time, obviously does not mean that that is a, a healthy way of eating. And the same is true for any sort of low FODMAP diet, any sort of paleo diet, any sort of um, you know, low carbohydrate diet that is restricting you healing foods. Right. Yeah. So actually, you know, we haven't talked about how another uh, good ingredient that's needed to reverse food sensitivities is to keep animal products out of the diet. And this is important because animal products can bring in with them pathogenic bacteria that can populate the gut and again, bring bring dysbiosis, bring an imbalance in uh, the mic microbial environment in the gut. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, that should have been stated earlier because <laughs> it's important. The other thing that should have been stated earlier, but it's not too late to talk about, <laughs> is the fact that a lot of people have uh, food sensitivities to uh, gluten and corn and yeah. soy. Uh -huh. um, these are GMO crops, um, you know, or crops that are sprayed heavily with pesticides and herbicides. And a lot of the times people are reacting to the toxic chemicals that are used on these foods, not the food proteins themselves. But the thing with gluten, corn, and soy is that um, these, the proteins of these foods can become like attached to the glyphosate protein. So our immune system can actually mount an immune response against the glyphosate protein, but then we start eating clean wheat, clean corn, clean soy from clean non-GMO organic sources, and we still have this molecular mimicry phenomenon happening where our immune system, you know, sees the wheat protein, sees the gluten protein or the corn or the soy protein, and has just this association, this memory of, oh, gluten means that there's also glyphosate. So I need to get my immune system up and ready to fight this, uh, you know, foreign substance because we do actually don't want glyph, we, we do don't want, we don't want <laughs> glyphosate in our body. So an immune reaction to these chemicals is natural and healthy. Yeah. But, but, what's, but what's healthier is getting rid of the chemicals. Yeah. What's healthier is getting rid of the chemicals and what's even healthier, like what will, when we think about creating a robust, strong, diverse microbial environment to produce a strong, robust, digestive, you know, function in the body. <laughs> I was listening for the word. We want to be eating all the different plants, all the different variety of plants. And that even includes the plants that contain gluten in them, believe totally. it or not. We are so not gluten-free and we do not advocate for a long-term gluten-free diet unless gluten is an, an, an acute issue and unless you have celiac. celiac disease and yeah. unless you are eating contaminated gluten from GMO sources or from sources, I guess there's no, no real GMO wheat, but a lot of wheat is heavily sprayed with glyphosate as a desiccant, right? Yeah, exactly. Desiccating agent. Exactly. So for people who are listening to this episode who don't necessarily have uh, food sensitivity symptoms or have digestive symptoms, still, we would challenge you to bring in more different plant foods, different fibers. In, in, in the most whole, natural, intact form as possible. Yes, definitely. Yeah, just, so, because, just because in, we're telling you to eat gluten doesn't mean go order a large cheese pizza or something like that or go get a big bowl of pasta. Um, there's other gluten-containing grains that you can eat in more whole form whole food form you can make your own bread with uh you know whole wheat variety we were just gifted a half a loaf of white bread <laughs> that was baked organic. organic white bread baked by a friend of ours and it was delicious we don't eat this often but we do eat it when on occasion because we want to feed our microbes these healthy different fibers and proteins mm-hmm 
Exactly. Um, the the last thing I wanted to bring up, I realized that I that this didn't come up earlier in the conversation. When we do have a healthy, diverse microbial population in our gut, when we're, when our microbiome is optimized, our, our those microbes create this protective film that lines our intestinal lining, a biofilm it's called. It's a beneficial biofilm produced by the beneficial bacteria of your gut. And that creates a level of resilience and a level of protection against toxic substances, against substances that might cause irritation or inflammation of your gut. Um, so put another way, as you heal your gut, as you diversify your microbiome, as you reverse these food sensitivities and reverse the in intestinal permeability that's at the root of the food sensitivities, then we are actually able to be more resilient and be and we're able to withstand more insults of our digestive uh, lining that is in the kind of controlled acute circumstances. Once we start really beating up our digestive lining and once we start really, you know, eating the processed junk foods that are stripped of fiber and once we start moving back away from our optimal microbiome state, then we lose that protective biofilm that has uh, the protective beneficial effects. Yeah. And, you know, we didn't really talk to this point either, but yeah. when you do that, people start to kind of pin themselves in this corner when they start to take out foods from their diet because they think, oh, I'm sensitive to that. Oh, now I'm sensitive. Now I'm sensitive to oranges. Now I'm sensitive to grapes. Now I'm, I keep getting more and more sensitive. What's up with that? They, they pin themselves in this corner where they can only eat a, like a handful of different foods. Yeah. And um, if you just think of what's going on in the gut, um, you're losing all diversity in the gut. Um, and so anyway, now we're just kind of repeating ourselves, but I, I, I felt like I wanted to say that because yeah. it's, it's, it's common to see these days and it breaks my heart. And the only way to get out of it is to bring in all those different other fibers, but slowly and mindfully and very intentionally. Yes. So anytime you've been told you're sensitive to this, you're sensitive to that, uh, don't believe it. Don't believe what you're told. Don't believe what you're told. Challenge that. Challenge it in a mindful sort of way. Um, because we see a lot of people who say, oh, yeah, well, you know, I'm sensitive to the nightshade vegetables. Um, and then they go years without having a nightshade ve vegetable and they restrict themselves from the nightshade digesting fiber digesting microbes in their gut and then they eat a nightshade ves vegetable and they d can't digest the fibers associated with that or the proteins associated with that whatever and then they have symptoms so they get stuck in this corner like you said and then their thoughts cr are created around that which creates stress and fear and then they block the d release of digestive enzymes block our you know healing potential um so that's the, the long and the short of it. And on that topic also, real quickly, food sensitivity testing. Um, there's a oh lot boy. of that. Uh, testing for IgG and IgA, which are the antibodies uh, related to food sensitivity. And a lot of people, you know, we get people, um, clients who come to us and say, this is my food sensitivity panel. I can't eat any of these foods. I usually put it in the paper shredder and never look at it again. <laughs> what we say is that, okay, if you're sensitive to all these foods, what that means is that your intestines are inflamed right now. Yeah. And uh, typically what comes up on these tests are the foods that people tend to eat a lot of. And those food proteins are uh, in their body, in their blood because of that hyperpermeability of the gut lining. And it doesn't mean that you are are sensitive to these foods for the rest of your life at all. In fact, if you were to retest, you would probably get different uh, different foods coming up being flagged um, because our microbial environment is always uh, shifting and um, changing depending on what we eat. Yeah. So. so you guys, there's a lot to this. Obviously, we've uh, gone on and on for about 30 minutes now, and I feel like we're just scratching the surface. But hopefully this provides you some clarity, some direction. And if you have any thoughts, comments, questions, come on into the plant-based and stress-free Facebook group. You can share your questions there and um, you know, engage in the conversation here. 
And hopefully we'll also see you at our upcoming whole food plant-based challenge, the stress-free series, which starts once again, Monday, May 25th at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We've got a whole series of Facebook lives happening in that plant-based and stress-free Facebook group. And that's all for now. Yeah. I, I guess it was an abrupt ending, but I feel like it was time to end because we could talk for so much longer about this food sensitivity stuff, but we're not going to. Not today, at least. <laughs> yes. All right. Bye, everyone. Thanks for joining us. Peace and love.